Hi everyone, I'm going to walk through setting up a Rails environment inside of Code Anywhere. This walkthrough will follow the written directions I've posted on the course website. Now, I'm starting in the dashboard. This is what most of you will see when you first log into Code Anywhere. And then I'm going to switch over to the projects view. That's the third element down in the menu here on the left. And then click the create a new project link in the big box on the white. So I'm going to choose Rails project for the name of this project, for lack of anything more imaginative at the moment, and click the Create link. Once that project is created, I'm going to open it. Now, the first time you open the project, it's going to ask it's going to bring up the connection wizard. Now, I haven't used any connections yet, but my impression is that this connects the project you've made with some other external code repository. So, for example, if I were to connect this project to GitHub, then any changes I would make using the IDE, the editor here in the web browser, would be reflected in that GitHub repository. Now, I'm not going to set up any connections. I'm just going to create a container where a container is like a little virtual Linux box that we're going to be running Rails in. So I'm going to call this container My Rails. And then I have to pick the stack. The stack is just the set of software that comes set up on this Linux box. And since we're going to do Rails, I'm going to pick the Ruby container, and I'm going to pick the Ubuntu version. Now, I'm not sure what the practical differences are between doing Ruby in the Ubuntu version and the CentOS version. I just know that Professor Engelsmar recommended I go with the Ubuntu version. So I'm going to select that and hit Create. And then this will take, oh, about two or three minutes. OK, so once that container is ready to go, I end up looking at a little web page here describing the properties of that container and giving some URLs of how to access it externally. But to work with it, we're going to switch over to the other tab here. That's the SSH console. So that's like a little uh, command line interface that we can use. Now, the first step is to make sure all the necessary software is in place and up to date. I'm going to start with RVM, the Ruby version manager. And I can see that we're running 1.29.4. That's a pretty up to date version. But just to show you how to do it, we'll update to the latest version. So I'll run RVM git stable. And then we can see that we got version 1.29.7. The next step is to check our Ruby version, which is 2.5.1. OK, so let's th upgrade that to the latest version, which I believe is 2.6.0. All right, so let's check. We did, in fact, get 2.6.0. So now let's configure RVM to make that the default. I'm not sure if that's necessary in this case, but if you are following these directions in a different environment, it may be necessary. OK, the next step is to check Rails. Let me clear the screen here. And I go to run Rails, and I see that it's not installed. So we need to install Rails ourselves. We'll use the Ruby package manager called Gem. Now this step here will take somewhere between four and six minutes. It's not a terribly fast process, so I will fast forward through that. You'll notice that the part of the installation dealing with mail 271 is perhaps the slowest. So if you think your installation may have stalled out or something's broken, it hasn't. You just have to be patient. OK, now that that's done installing, let's build a Rails app. Rails apps are fairly complicated and have a lot of pieces, so Rails provides a script to set that all up for us. 
Notice that I'm in the workspace directory. I'll come back to that in a minute. And I'm going to run Rails new, call it test app. And so this Rails script goes and builds a test app directory and fills it with the various pieces needed for a full-fledged Rails app. Notice now that it's done, if we look over here on the left, we see that test app directory and we can look inside of it and see the different pieces that Rails set up for us. What to do with all these pieces and how these work is a subject of many, many lectures, videos, books, and so on. So we'll save those for another time. But I do want to point out that it is important that you set up this app somewhere underneath the workspace directory. Notice that when we installed it, that folder appeared here in the menu on the left. And as far as I can tell, if you put something inside of this Code Anywhere container that's not underneath the workspace directory, you don't have access to it through the, the web page here. You can still get access to those files through the command line, but I'm not sure if there's any way to edit those files other than a command line, line editor like VI. So now we have the, the app set up. It's time to run it. So I will type Rails S, I believe S stands for serve, and inside of Code Anywhere, we need to include a binding parameter. And then we run it, and this doesn't look right. So, and I actually did this on purpose to point out, if this happens, if you get what looks like the help screen, it means you you ran the Rails serve command from outside a Rails app. Notice I'm still in my workspace directory. I need to change into the test app directory, and then I can run that Rails command. And we see something a little more like what's expected, a little simple message from the server. And now if we go back to that other tab that gives us information about the container. We see the URL down here, and when we click on that URL, we see the default Rails landing page. So we don't have any of our own content in here, and like I said, that's not a short topic, but now we've got a basic Rails app up and running, a place to start adding our own code. So now you should be good to go to grab some tutorials or books and experiment around on your own, and we will talk about this more in class. See you then.